Aye, with Eric. All right, I'll call this Board of Selectmen's meeting to order for Tuesday, June 23rd. Uh, we'll start off with roll call. Um, Eric Gasparin is present. Pam Alley? Present. Bill Crossman? Oh, Phil is muted. Phil is still muted. Is that the same as being married? Okay, I'm here. <laughs> and Donald Poole. Present. All right, approve agenda. We have one addition. I move we add MSAD number eight budget referendum warrant for July 14th, 2020. Second. Seconded by Phil Crossman. Um, Eric Gasparini votes yes. Pam Alley? Yes. Bill Crossman? Yes. Donald Poole? Yes. Okay, minutes. Approve the minutes from the June 4th and June 9th meeting. Is there any objection to just combining these two meetings? None. I move we approve the minutes from both meetings. Second. Seconded Bill Crossman. Eric Gasparini votes yes. Pam Alley? Yes. Bill Crossman? Yes. Donald Poole? Yes. And Jake Thompson just joined us. How do you vote, Are you Jake? Approving the, you're approving the agenda, right? Approving the minutes. Oh, okay, yeah, I, yes. Okay, approve and sign treasure number 52, so moved. Second. Seconded by Phil Crossman. Eric Gasparini votes yes. Pam Alley? Yes. Phil Crossman? Yes. Donald Poole? Yes. Jake Thompson? Yes. Uh, okay. Committee and department reports and appointments. Road commissioners report. Reports. Any questions? Andy, when we when we do this, can you scroll for us from? I, well, I guess if I click off my cameras, I can. No, yeah, I, I still. Have, I'm I sorry. Whole, I have the both weeks just in that one screenshot there. Right, but we can't scroll. Right. So can you start at the top and work its way down? Work the um, way down. Yeah, so in the PowerPoint version, all I can do is go to the next slide. I can't. Oh, okay. That's fine. What's the story? The backhoe is fixed and back to work? Or like, I thought I saw it on here somewhere, but I can't remember. So the our, our cat backhoe is up in Herman, um, where the case dealer is. Um, they're loaning us the backhoe that we're using at the moment um, while they um, look at repairing the other one. So the one that was out here was just on loan for the is on loan for the time being. Correct. Was there one that was out here that was going to be for sale or to yeah, us? Yeah, the one that or? the one that's here on loan is is being you know, loaned or demoed, if you will. Um, so that is the one that is available for purchase. But we had voted on uh, leasing, correct? Um, I think that was, there was more preference to see a lease over uh, a loan to buy one. Um, how, you know, if you want to do anything with that and there's no commitment on it at this point, it's just there was interest and they were willing to let us loan it or demo it um, while they were working on the other one. Okay. Is that going to be in your report? Any information about that in your report tonight? Um, I can give you more now. I mean, they're still waiting on a couple more numbers to get some of the attachments. Like I know there was a quick connect that was needed that would allow us to use some of the buckets we already have, like that snow pusher. Um, so we still are waiting on that. Um, I know the, the, the machine itself is um, about 90,000. It's a one-year-old machine that was out on lease and had less than a hundred hours when it came in. Well, that would be a pretty good deal, wouldn't it? For 
wasn't it like 125 for a brand new one? I believe that was the ballpark that they had given us for a brand new one, yeah. Is there any um, reason why it was returned after a year? The state, it came back from the state after a one year lease. What what comes along with, if we didn't purchase it, what comes along with it? Are there any additional like attachments or other pieces of equipment that come with it? So I think, I mean, my understanding is it's just that front bucket, um, you know, just what's on there right now, what you see. I don't, I don't believe there's any other um, pieces, but again, we're looking into that. I think the thumb, there isn't a thumb on it. And that's something that presumably is um, versatile and handy. Um, so we'd have to get that. It is plumbed for one, but it doesn't have one. So that would be an additional. So we're looking at getting an estimate on a thumb um, as well as that quick couple, that quick coupling um, piece. And that, again, that would allow us to transition out of some of the other pieces we already own. And how much did we assume that a lease might be for a year? Did we have a quote? Uh, yeah, so the numbers through the, um, the dealer, you know, wasn't really any different than what you would see through a bank that would apparently don't have that shorter term, like you see with cars and trucks, um, you know, so it was pretty much set up to, you know, lease to own, if you will, not like a short term lease. Right. I think so. Um, yeah, it was just, it was going to put it in that 25,000 a year. Right. Five year payoff or less, maybe a little bit more. Should we reconsider this? Yeah. yeah, I mean, the repairs that need to be done on the cat are something that, um, I mean, again, it's something that this year has proven very challenging to have um, on a somewhat reliable basis. It's, it's not a bad machine. It's just um, has some misfortunes. Um, so, I mean, I think <laughs> what you can do is decide, you know, one thing I was talking um, with them earlier about is, you know, while it's up there, do we want to have them take a look at it and give us an idea of what a trade-in value might be for it? Um, you know, and continue to keep the one that's at the transfer station? Do we have them look at the one at the transfer station and give us a rough idea what that might be on a trade-in value? Um, you know, if you wanted to, if you did want to consider purchasing it, um, you know, that being said, the it's, unless you want to modify the warrant um, to include that, that payment, um, you might look to use your reserve funds for public works. Um, that wouldn't, that wouldn't require any loan or additional cost. It's something that's already been raised and, and available. So there would be just one backhoe for both? I'd propose, I would suggest having two still. It was just, right. you, know, you might look at getting rid of one of one of the two. Oh, I see what you're saying, okay. As a, as a trade-in offset. Right. Well, the one that's broken might be worth, you know, just as much, if not more, to them because they can fix it cheaper. I mean, if it's already up there, then I mean, then us fixing it and bringing it home and bringing the other one up, it might still be cheaper just to leave that one there, I guess. Yeah, I don't think it hurts to get an idea of what, what the trade and value might be on it. I mean, while it's right there, they should you, you should have them at least take a look at it. It can't hurt. Yeah, that, I agree. Doesn't cost doesn't cost us anything. Right. At a minimum, based on what they said, was they've looked at it and this at least one bad injector. They're going to test all four of them. Um, there was something wrong with the ride, um, some of the shocks in the ride system um, that would presumably need to be fixed. And there were some wires um, that were chafing um, and needed to be um, fixed. And as well as and there was the air conditioner unit that also isn't working. Um, so some of those have higher priorities than others in terms of, you know, making sure it's within the budget we have set for this current fiscal year before it ends. Um, so I just need to get into contact with them and see where we're at. We didn't have numbers. We know what's wrong, but we didn't have estimates on what it would cost to fix each component. Eric, if you're speaking, you are muted. Sorry about that. So for our next meeting, you can presumably get us some information about 
a tr- possible trade in. Yes. We can go from there. Okay. Anything else on the road commissioner's report? Okay, we'll move on to can you bring up the agenda again, Andy? On to the treasurer's report. Um, you guys see that okay? Mm-hmm. Yep. So I think I gave you this in your board packet, but it just shows on the left side of the of the screen the expenses um, through last week's warrant. I didn't do it from what was printed yesterday, um, but just gives an idea where what we spent with two weeks left um, and what I estimated would be spent over those next two weeks. Um, then the third column is what we budgeted. So then it would show for each department, the money's spent um, you know, through, or I guess relative to what was budgeted, um, if it was up or down. Um, and then the other half of the screen on the right is the revenues. And again, similar uh, what we had brought in through the 16th, what I think we'll bring in through the rest of the year um, versus what we budgeted. Is that property tax one off by so much because people are waiting until July 1st, you think? Or... So that one. Because that seems like it's off by uh, 420, yeah, $430,000 almost. Yeah, so I mean, every year you have some that's not just not collected anyways, and then that goes through a lien process and eventually it's paid. Um, you know, there's probably anywhere from two to 400,000 that way anyways. Um, you know, we have seen a lot of tax payments come in still, um, you know, but there, I'm sure there are a few that um, haven't yet um, given what's going on, but nothing that's terribly out of the ordinary. The other one that I think is worth just um, drawing some attention to is the transfer station one. So that's, that one's most likely going to be a little bit under from what we budgeted. Um, the homestead exemption, I, I don't know if we'll end up having that come closer to what was um, projected before the um, COVID-19 shutdown, um, but that one's possible to come in under what was expected when we started. Um, the vehicle excise tax is, uh, where's that one? Oh, probably about 40,000 over what we budgeted. There's the admin income. Um, we didn't budget for any admin income, but that $89,000 is the money that came in from um, the, that land use violation in the court payoff from a few years ago. Um, that's money that just goes back into the fund balance. Okay. Any questions with any of that? Okay, we'll move on to approve and sign annual town meeting warrant for July 22nd, 2020. So moved. Second. Seconded by Phil Crossman. Eric Gasparini votes yes. Pam Allen? Yes. Bill Crossman? Yes. Donald Poole? Yes. Jake Thompson? Yes. Okay. Next up is approve and sign special town meeting warrant for July 22nd, 2020. So this is one I, I threw out there for consideration. I don't know if you know we're, if you guys want to do this, but so this past year, I think it was last year, we had, a, we had created the reserve funds for certain buildings. Um, and so some of those projects still need to happen. Um, and so instead of the money that was appropriated for those, that pro- those projects to happen, just going into fund balance, I was gonna see if you wanted to consider um, pulling that money and putting it in those reserve accounts, the money that was already had been appropriated for those line items. So there was those three buildings um, and then the parks reserve, the difference, the, the 4,000 there is we, we budgeted for 8,000 to come in for revenue uh, from the pilot payments, we had 12. Um, so just the consideration of putting that additional 4,000 just into the parks reserve to make sure it's available for future needs. So if you wanted to consider those things, the thought was just having it on, as we did a few years ago, just having it on um, the same day as the annual town meeting and just allowing it to happen immediately following um, that one, if that was something 
you wanted to consider? Yeah. I move we approve and sign a special town meeting warrant for July 22nd, 22nd, 2020, uh, immediately following the annual town meeting. Second. Seconded by Phil Crossman. Eric Gasparini votes yes. Pam Alley? Yes. Phil Crossman? Yeah. Donald Poole? Yes. Jake Thompson? Yes. Okay. And okay, town building review uh, for COVID 19 compliance checklist. I know a couple of you had asked about. Um, if the town office would be opening or opening soon um, for the general public to be able to come in. Um, so I just provided you a memo with the guidelines um, in your packet. Um, there, you, any, of, any of you had thoughts or maybe for those that had asked if there was any perspective that you could share, um, you know, what you were hearing or again, you know, all the services and things that um, anyone can do are available. Um, the exception of being able to come to the counter unless it's unless it's needed i'm fine with whatever you think is best yeah i am too have there been lots of calls for the town office to be open as as it well not normally but I feel like we're getting through most of the work as, as is now when the conditions were working, right? It seems to be working, correct? From the feedback I've gotten from the staff, um, again, I've been working upstairs mostly uh, when I'm here, so I don't overhear or see as much down there. Um, but from what I understand from, from talking with them, and I talked to them the last two days about what their thoughts were on it, but I haven't heard of anyone saying, I mean, Aside from maybe someone saying, well, if they're not open, you know, I can't just swing in. I mean, the only difference is that you have to knock on the door and wait for someone to come out. Um, a lot of people, um, you know, some of them have expressed they don't mind and they, they're they glad they can do some of the stuff over the phone. They didn't know they couldn't um, before. Um, you know, anyone that doesn't want to pay the over the, you know, pay the two and a half percent credit card processing fee, they don't have to. I mean, they can start the transact the process and, and tell them what the cost would be and let them know what the check amount is. And if you know, if they can finalize that and they can just drop off the check and then pick up the paperwork. So, you know, for the most part, it's worked, you know, it's, it adds another, you know, minute or two maybe to the transaction by having to get up and wait um, at the door. But other than that, I haven't had any feedback that suggests um, it's not working. I did have a couple um, suggestions that, you know, we could do to try and make it still a little bit easier if we were, were to stay the way we are now. Um, you know, someone did either one of our meetings, might have been Dinah actually, was talking about, you know, getting like a ring doorbell, just a wireless thing that would allow, um, you know, the staff to be able to see the person, um, you know, from the desk and, and have that conversation you know, before they initially have to get up. Um, so maybe they could eliminate just a little bit more time of someone having to wait outside. Um, I think one of the staff, not not too much jokingly suggested, well, it's too bad. It was a nice day. We too bad we can't sit outside and have a desk outside and say, well, maybe there's something we can think about doing. Um, you know, if we wanted to try and consider that on nice days, it wouldn't take much to have a table and a small, you know, a covering over them if, if need be. Um, you know, so I think there's ways that we could, can, we could look at, um, you know, if, if it's the time it takes to go through because the door's locked and, um, you know, we can do that. If it's just the convenience factor, um, Again, I think there's other ways that we could try to do that without opening up the building. Well, also, I had not taken into consideration the fact that you have to, all the plexiglass, everything would have to go in, you know, on the counters. They wouldn't be able to just come in and stand there and talk to people, you know, back and forth. I assume that's what you indicated to me, Andy, that the plexiglass would have to go in. That's, uh, that's definitely one of the guidelines. And so that being said, the state, um, as long as we don't have to return them, the state is providing some PPE for the, um, the polling station for the elections. And so with that comes a couple of four foot by something uh, plexiglass 
tabletop pieces. And so that was something that, you know, maybe after those come, if we don't need to send them back, you know, we could put up on the counter if they fit. And so, you know, if we wanted to, we could have that without having to go through the couple hundred dollars in time to build them. Um, so I think that's something we can look to. Um, we also talked about internally a few times over the last few years, and I don't know if the board wants to to do this, um, it'd be a little bit of a cost to get it set up, but that rapid renewal option where you could re-register re your car from home, just online, um, you know, we would still get the excise tax sent to us. There's just an extra step that we'd have to get. And I forget what the quote was. It was a, a few hundred bucks a year, I think, to have the that third party interface that would send, that would forward us the money. We would forego the dollar agent fee, I think it is for those transactions, but um, you know, if that, if that makes it easier for people to, and for us to collect the, the excise tax, you know, it might be worth considering now. I mean, for a few hundred dollars a year. Now, I'll have to double check. I don't think it was terribly expensive. It just wasn't something that we generally had budgeted for, but um, you know, I, I don't think it would be a terrible problem to try and do, if, as long as it wasn't more than a couple grand. So I think it was less than a thousand, but I'll double check. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you bring that back to us? So, oh, yeah. so you but as far as opening up the um, office for now, I think, I think we should just keep continue doing what we're doing. Yeah, I agree. Jake, did you have a question? I was just going to say, I mean, if we want, if we want, want it to look like we want the island to be more open and everyone to be going out and doing stuff it doesn't look good that we keep everything closed up up there so i mean we got to make up our mind on what we want so well if everything's working well you know i don't i don't see any need to especially if some of the staff feel uncomfortable about it about opening Why don't we revisit this at our next meeting in a couple of weeks or so, and by then we'll there'll almost certainly be new guidelines. They seem to change them every other day, and we'll see where we are at that point in time. Sounds good. Okay, and then we need to approve and sign MSAD number eight budget referendum for, is what, July 14th? Correct, Andy. You went too quickly. Uh, yes. Yeah. All right. I move we approve the warrant for um, MS the MSA MSAD eight warrant. Second. Eric, you muted. Sorry, I'm using my phone instead of my computer. Uh, Eric Gasparini. All right. Seconded by Phil Crossman. Eric Gasparini votes yes. Pam Alley. Yes. Bill Crossman? Yes. Donald Poole? Yes. Jake Thompson? Yes. Okay. Just add that the school is having a budget hearing tonight at 6 uh, via Zoom. I think the login information is on their Facebook page. Um, might, I don't know if it's in the wind too, but it's definitely on their Facebook page. That's just part of that. So that tonight's their first step process and then... Um, to do that virtually instead of the district meeting that usually you attend in person and then the budget referendum will be there for the as it usually is um, but that'll be the only vote this year to approve the budget so they don't have to vote tonight they just get to put it out automatically as far as i understand yes okay a report from town manager all right um Talk about the backhoe, you know, about the elections. Just another plug for the elections. We've already had close to 100 requests for absentee ballots. Um, again, just if anyone would prefer to do it that way, we would, rec you know, encourage you to come in and or call and request the ballot. I think you might be able to do it online as well, and then we get notified and can get it to you. Um, you can either pick them up in person or um, I believe we will mail them out if you can't. Uh, how come we can't just send them to everyone like some other places? Is it illegal in Maine? They have to request them first. 
Yeah, I haven't asked that question, you know, of a legal counsel, but um, I mean, because we... some of some of the people that usually work at the polling are, you know, in the age bracket that shouldn't be around a lot of people. So, I mean, I don't know if they're still going to do it or not, but um, it would be good if we could just get everyone to do it by mail. Yeah, I think we've had a few that were kind of hesitant and concerned. Um, I know Darlene has been trying to make sure that there's a, a list of people that she could call, um, you know, both for, for the throughout the day for the clerks as well as at night when, when they're counting. Um, that's been the concern some other towns have had in, in trying to get the state to provide any guidelines up until what they had. So um, I think, you know, it depends. So that, again, the PPE will be provided and we'll do the best we can. We'll have to limit how many can come in the building at a time. Um, I suggested that we look at having a, um, a table or a booth or something set up outside. If folks, you know, didn't have a mask or forgot um, that they'd be able to still vote, you know, and I think you can do same day absentee and, and we would either do it that way or um, other towns have said if, if someone um, were to come in and, and can't or doesn't wear the mask, then they'd be able to come in, um, but they'd be the only ones in at that point and would have to wait um, for the staff to wipe things down uh, for the next one or two people or maybe three people to come in. We've got to figure out how many we can have in, have in at one time. If it's nice out, you can you just have it outside, or you have to have it inside. Uh, I don't think we have to have it inside. It's just a matter of staff, and you'd have to be able to pick one or the other and have enough to either split, um, or obviously have nice enough weather to do it outside. If you do it outside, you got to be able to have you know, obviously the same setup and um, tables, and you I mean it would take a bit of figuring to move all of it outside. Um, we have to come up with some makeshift voting booths. Um, so I think at this point, um, having it inside primarily with the you know possibility of having like a booth or something set up outside for one um, might be a way to go okay. uh, let's see the probably heard about the structure fire last week um, there were no injuries that I know of from that um, EMS calls have been kind of a steady uh, number or kind of a sl small increase, I think, over the last few weeks. Um, transfer station, I think, with the way the um, the expenditures are shaping up um, this year, I'm going to try and make make sure we can get a tablet um, so we can do that QuickBooks POS we've been talking about, making sure that they have a tablet um, available that they could try and have whoever's up at the um, the hopper there for the solid waste they could process the payments there. <laughs> Composting might have seen there's there's been a couple instances where some of the material from the compost, the working compost pile has been removed. Um, there's a couple signs up at this point and I think we we're going to try and look at um, just using some of the rock that's up there to, you know, kind of create a, not a gate, but a way to kind of make it a little more secure. Um, just while that, again, is still a working pile. Um, Meeting with the sheriff and county administrator tentatively next week at some point. Um, we've got a few dates that we're looking at um, um, to talk about the contract uh, to pick up that discussion that we had had from the draft a couple months ago. Um, so the only thing I think that's worth adding at this point is um, we weren't we were going to just try and get something for six months from July to, to December, but. Um, we'll pretty much be into July when we first start talking about it. So I'm suggesting that we take up the housing at that point as well um, with the hopes of having it finalized by December. <laughs> um, they have uh, the union contract that's coming up soon as well. That'll renew at the end, after December with the county, um, between the county and the deputies. So that's another component there. I think it, it all kind of pieces together the timing of that. So I think the housing's been a big one that you guys have expressed, and I know a lot of people in the community have expressed. Um, so make sure we bring that up. The seed, you might remember the CD um, when we put those out for um, for bids last year. We had picked one of them to go, picked one from the first at an eight month. I think it was eight months um, rate. It was a higher higher rate of the ones offered, and so we put three of our reserves in that. Um, so it was more available to us, not knowing exactly when we'd be doing the sidewalk road, main street projects. Um, 
So those are maturing this week. I think one was last week, another one this week. Um, what I did was asked for a checking, um, what the rate was at the checking account, um, yeah, the checking accounts were for them and they were at 0.45, um, which I think was a little bit better than what Camden had offered us when our um, banking proposal ran up with them. Um, so for right now, that's where, that's where it'll sit. Um, and you can decide, um, you know, do you want to put, I wouldn't recommend trying to get another longer term or even a shorter term CD rate. You know, Jake, uh, the first offered the checking rate at 0.45 or another eight month CD at 8.45. So I said, if that's the case, just put it in the checking account for now. Um, talk about it with you guys. Um, if you, I don't, I wouldn't recommend necessarily putting it in with the other CD account only because that one locks in. I think that's a, um, it's got a little over four years left on it. And if you're going to have the main street project uh, going and use those reserve funds for cash match, you're going to want access to it without penalty, presumably. Um, you know, so you just want to, I think, be smart with how accessible those funds might be. Um, you know, and if it's over a million dollars, there's not generally any year that we have a million dollars to put in on the, you know, so for cash flow and on the books, um, it wouldn't work out without having a penalty to withdraw it. The other thing um, for the next meeting, uh, my plan was to have put out and presumably received bids for the loans for the capital projects. I know we put them out too long ago. Um, so the term that we had set to sign those has gone by. Um, the bond council suggested that we um, either put it back out or um, get a refresh on it, on those rates, um, you know, in the interest of making sure that it's still, I think with the, where the market's going and where the rates are now, I mean, it's presumably going to be a little bit less than what it was. Um, but with the, how long it's taken to get the project bids to come back now, um, we're going to want to presumably either put it back out to bid to get rates from other banks or um, you can choose, I guess, if you want to um, just get a refresh from the first. Why don't we see if it is, see if the rates have improved a little bit and put it back put it back out to bid. That's what I would recommend. Okay. Yeah, we might as well put it out to bid. I doubt the rates are going to be very high anytime soon, but might as well put them out to bid. Okay. Let's see if I can time that up with the next uh, regular meeting. Have those back by then. Okay. Okay. Are you, okay. Report of members. Does anyone have anything? I'm all set. Okay. Hearing none, I move we adjourn. Second. Seconded by Phil Crossman. Eric Gasper, any votes? Yes. Pam Allen? Yes. Bill Crossman? Yes. Donald Poole? Yes. Jake Thompson? Yes. All right, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night.